All right, so good morning. Bonjour à tous. Gwei, and I've been corrected on how I was pronouncing that, uh, saying welcome in Mi'kmaq. I've been saying it phonetically, but I have a brand new app which tells me how to pronounce a whole bunch of greetings. Um, and I'm so excited about that because it's spoken by elders and I learned that recently. Um, so good morning and welcome to everyone. Uh, my name is Carol Spicer. I'm the owner of Spicer Facilitation and Learning and very happy and pleased to welcome you to our Navigate Entrepreneur Ecosystem Coffee Break on November 16th, 2021. Weather's a little bit odd. Not sure what, you know, it doesn't look like November in a moment and then later on it does look like November. So it keeps changing. <laughs> Um, but I'm joining you from the beautiful community of Pasadena on the West Coast, which is in the unceded territory of the ancient Beothic. And I would ask that you each take a moment to reflect on where you're joining us from and acknowledge with respect the traditions and cultures of the Indigenous people of our province. We have uh, Indigenous folks from uh, Beothic descent, Mi'kmaq, Innu, and Inui, and all of those groups are uh, certainly bringing an enriched culture to our province. So. I do ask you to take a moment and think about where you're joining us from today. I'm very pleased to welcome Sharon McLennan from the Newfoundland and Labrador Workforce Innovation Center, who has graciously agreed to be our guest speaker today. Um, so she'll be up in just a few moments, um, but I am going to turn it over to my partner uh, who has been doing these coffee breaks with me now for almost two years, believe it or not, folks. Um, Allison Rowe is the manager with Navigate Small Business, and uh, she's going to do a brief intro for those that may be uh, new to us, and for those that are familiar, just hang in with us for a few minutes. <laughs> Allison, take it away. All right, welcome everyone, and, and thank you, Carol. Um, we actually, I see a, a few new people on here today, so I'll, I'll go through the introduction of what Navigate is. Uh, so as Carol mentioned, I'm the, the manager of Navigate, and Navigate is a, a partnership between uh, Grenfell Campus and CNA Cornerbrook Campus, and we help uh, early stage startups uh, right from the idea stage through to developing your business plan, um, we help with uh, market research and uh, we connect you to network of resources to other entrepreneurs. We can help you also with uh, developing products and uh, prototypes. And we also provide business incubation services for when you're, you're getting that early traction. And we do that through three different service pillars. Um, so we have our entrepreneurship centers and that's the earliest stage. So you, you may have a business idea and you wanna develop it, or you might, be, um, you might be someone who's just considering entrepreneurship, not really sure, wanna come join some events, meet some folks and see if maybe this is right for you. Um, that's uh, that's where, we, where you would go. So the entrepreneurship centers, there are two of them. Uh, one is located at Grenfell campus and one is located at uh, CNA Cornerbrook campus. And our services are open to students and the general public. Um, so anyone in uh, Western Newfoundland who wants to uh, connect with us, we, we can help you out. And then uh, after the Entrepreneurship Center, we also have a maker space, um, again, for product and prototype development. And also uh, there's a community aspect to it where you can come and learn how to use different tools and technology. Um, and we have a business incubator. And the business incubator currently uh, is located at CNA in the Entrepreneurship Center, where we have three resident uh, offices and a co-working space. However, uh, both the Business Incubator and Makerspace, which Makerspace is currently at Grenfell, are soon going to be moving down to the new Center for Research and Innovation. Uh, yay, I know, <laughs> yay! <laughs> um, for anyone who's, uh, who is from the Cornerbrook area or familiar with Cornerbrook, uh, right across from the mill, there's a big old white building that was in uh, in a bit of disrepair. That was the, you know, everything in Cornerbrook is the old something building. Well, it's the old HR building of the mill. Um, and now it's looking like a much newer building and uh, soon to be completed. Uh, we're anticipating the construction will be finished sometime in February, hopefully. And then we'll be launching the new center shortly thereafter. And, and that center is a partnership between CNA, Grenfell and, and the mill. So it's really going to be bringing together, um, you know, the uh, academia and industry, as well as the research components that uh, both CNA and Grenfell and and also the mill bring to uh, bring to the table. So it's going to be an exciting space. Uh, lots of uh, there'll be a, a what we're referring to as sort of a dirty maker space with things from, you know, woodworking and welding to uh, the cleaner side. Uh, that will involve tech and uh, 3D printers and all kinds of fun stuff. 
plus uh, co-working spaces and uh, and training and a training center. So stay tuned. Uh, once that opens, we'll be inviting you all to come and and check it out and connect to the services that we're going to be offering. Can't wait. It's going to be so exciting. Yeah, <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> all right. So excellent. Uh, so again, for thank you, Allison, for those that have just popped in. Um, if I can encourage you to throw your uh, contact information over in chat, I can see that a lot of folks are doing that. So thank you for that. Um, and we will gather up that information. Uh, and this is if you're solely interested in doing so, uh, we will gather up that information and send it out via Navigate's uh, newsletter. So welcome to everyone today for our uh, discussion around labor shortage. I know this has been a um, hot topic, not just in our province, but across Canada, across North America, probably around the world. And I'm sure that Sharon McLennan is going to uh, share some information with that. Um, so I'm gonna let Sharon introduce herself, but before she does that, I am gonna run through the list. And so I'm giving you a heads up, I'm gonna go alphabetical. So Andrew, you're gonna be up first. I'll give you a moment, um, it's alphabetical by first name. Um, give you a chance to introduce yourself so that Sharon has a sense of who she's speaking with today. So if you could let us know who you are, what organization you either represent or what business, or if you're just startup or thinking about it, um, and perhaps where you're located, because that's the really training nerd in me. I really love the fact that virtually we extend beyond our local community. So um, let us know where you're joining us from. So it's going to be Andrew first and then Ashley. Okay. So hi everyone, uh, my name is Andrew Hibbets and I'm an Economic and Tourism Development Officer with Red A T N L. so that's R-D-E-E-T-N-L. Um, we are a bilingual economic development organization. I'm located in Stephenville. Um, we have, um, Kelly is also in Stephenville and um, we have coworkers in St. John's and in Lab City. And uh, basically we, um, um, so in two roles, I guess, the tourism aspect of it, I do the francophone tourism marketing for the province. So for example, when you go to newfoundlandlabrador.com and you click on Francais up at the top, um, it redirects you to our website, which is exploretnl.ca. And we also do the francophone tourism uh, guide. Um, usually comes out every two years. However, COVID gave it um, an extra year of life. So we'll be using the same one for 2022. Um, and on the economic development side of things, um, we do uh, all sorts of things, projects relating to entrepreneurship, employability, immigration, and of course, and of course tourism. So that's me. And that's nice okay. to meet you. Thank you, Steve. Nice. Ashley and then Denise. Hi everyone, my name is Ashley Christopher. Um, I'm um, with the YMCA of Western Newfoundland here in Cornerbrook um, in the Employment Supports Division. Um, my job title would be Career Coach. Um, we are currently working on a workforce innovation center uh, project that addresses barriers to employment. Um, and um, yep, we're we're here to to support employers and potential employees. So hopefully we'll uh, we'll have some uh, good conversations surrounding that today. Excellent. Thank you. Welcome, Denise, and then Hillary. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. My name is Denise Blake. I'm a registered cardiology technologist working out of St. Anthony. Um, I work at the hospital here and I also have a private health and life coaching practice where I help people um, who are wanting to change their lifestyle habits to avoid or reduce lifestyle diseases such as cardiovascular, blood pressure issues, obesity, um, diabetes type 2 and I'm also uh, in the process of um, completing my trauma recovery coaching certification to help anyone who's been through a traumatic childhood um, or in their adulthood and specifically former foster youth and single parents. Wow fantastic welcome Denise so happy thank to have you. you. Thank and you. Right up to the northern peninsula loving it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you can't go any further without falling off. <laughs> That's right. This is where I get excited. 
Uh, Hillary and then Janice. Excellent. Uh, my name is Hillary King and I'm located in St. John's. Uh, myself and Linda, she's on the call as well. Uh, we work with International Education Newfoundland and Labrador. So I'm the retention coordinator there on the Study and Stay NL program. So we support international students across the province who are looking to long-term settle here and either get a career or start a business in the province. Excellent. Thank you, Hillary. Welcome. Janice and then Jennifer. Hi everyone, I'm Janice Evans. I'm one of three uh, people that operate a gift shop in York Harbor called The Roost. And we specialize in handmade Newfoundland crafts and original artworks and prints. And um, we invite everyone to come to the beautiful Bay of Islands. Even in the winter, it's beautiful down here. We're not open after Christmas, but presently our shop is open every weekend, 10 to five. Excellent. Thank you, Janice. Jennifer and then Kelly. I'm not sure if it's the Jennifer you're talking about. You're the one. Okay. The only Jennifer um, I know. So, uh, <laughs> yes, yeah, so I'm the executive director at CBDC Emerald in Bayvert. Uh, we cover the Bayvert Green Bay region. Um, I'm also volunteering at other organizations like the Development Association. So we run some programs during the summer for kids, linkages and Amplify and that can the summer jobs. But um, as CBDC, we, uh, we have a lot of businesses that we, um, we help and support. And one of the things they are struggling with is the labor shortage. And any information that I can get in networking and resources that I can help pass along to my clients. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much for joining us, Jennifer. Kelly and then Leah. Good morning, everyone. My name is Kelly Radford. I live in Stephenville and I also work for Red A T N L and uh, we I'm Andrew's assistant and we uh, represent the uh, east coast of the province. Uh, it's nice so nice to see you all. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Welcome. Leah and then Linda. Hello, good morning everybody. My name is Leah Kulpus and I'm also a career coach at the Western Division of the YMCA with Ashley and working on that project as well. So just looking forward to everyone's contributes to this conversation and hopefully we can learn some stuff. Excellent, thank you. Linda and then Mark. Hi everyone, my name is Linda Spingle and I work with um, International Education Newfoundland and Labrador. Hillary already introduced our program, the Study and Stay NL program. So my office is located in Cornerbrook and I'm based at the CNA campus in Cornerbrook. Um, so the program is for international students in their final year of study at MUN or CNA. And this year, we this cohort that we just started last week, we have 114 students accepted into the program. So wow, we're that's excellent. I read that. Thank you. So, so watch out because Linda's taking down all your names, entrepreneurs, and she's <laughs> going to come tag you to be a mentor. Yes. <laughs> <clears throat> I do speak highly of the program. The, I, I gave in to the pressure from Linda and Hillary, and I was a mentor last year. It was a fantastic experience. <clears throat> And there's actually a meet and greet tomorrow. So I'm assuming that I've been invited to that so I can be a mentor again this year. So looking forward to that. Thanks. Uh, Mark and then Mireille. Hi, I'm Mark Tierney. I'm a development officer with the Atlantic Canada Opportunities Agency, or ACOA, I guess it's better known, here in Cornerbrook. And I guess for those who don't know what ACOA is, it's the economic development arm, I guess, of the government of Canada. So we have business loans and can do community economic development projects as well. Excellent, thank you. Marie and then Ray. Marie, you're home, are you? Yeah, I um, I just got back a couple of weeks ago. So um, I'm originally from Stephenville. I'm in Cornerbrook now, and I got here from the UK. I've been away for about 14 years in several different countries. So I'm relocating here and starting up a website design 
Uh, I do user experience as well as website design so that the websites are actually user friendly. I know that a lot of tech in the past wasn't and, and so user experience has become a big thing. Um, so yeah, it was a really, really complex uh, move. COVID managed to complicate everything. But I'm actually here. I am in a house. I have a table and one chair and a mattress on the floor. <laughs> I think we've, we've all been there before. Um, but I actually, I came across something really, really helpful in my move as, as all these complications and frustrations happen with moving, of course, you find solutions. And uh, I found a financial technology company called Wise. And I saved about $10,000 on the cost of my home because you lose a lot of money when you transfer from one currency to the other. And so this, this company does it at a small fraction of the price. And I realized this is actually quite helpful for anybody that has to do business with anyone in another country. Um, so it's useful for uh, e-commerce. It's useful for me as a website designer because I have contacts in the UK who may want me to build websites and they will be paying me in pounds. So yeah, I just thought I'd throw that out there. In my recent lessons, I'm I'm having a lot of lessons in the past few weeks. <laughs> but I uh, we be home. Yeah, that's a great tip. Yeah, Marie, for those who don't know, she joined us from the UK, talked about her desire to move home. I've been following her journey on LinkedIn and Facebook, and her and her fur babies have gotten home. So excited to have you back in the province. <laughs> Ray and then Sarah. Hi everyone, it's Ray Miller. I'm with CBDC Long Range in Stephenville. It's nice to be here with you all. Uh, CBDC, as Jennifer has already alluded to, we do business loans, business advice. We offer the self-employment assistance benefit as well. Um, we help entrepreneurs get started basically is what we do. So we're, we're glad to be here. Excellent, thank you so much for joining. Sarah and then Shannon. Hello, everybody. I'm uh, Sarah Power. I'm the Media Information Officer at NL WIC. So I'm in Cornerbrook, pretty close to Sharon. She's just in the other <laughs> office there. So I'll let her explain more of what we're about. But I'm really excited to be here this morning with you all. Thank you. Excellent. Welcome, Sarah. Shannon and then Sharon E. Hey, hello, I'm uh, Shannon Sweetland. I'm here representing Elman Outdoor Education, something that uh, Navigate helped me start up about five years ago. And I offer uh, outdoor education opportunities for children and also adults through sea kayaking and canoeing programs. Ooh, love it. Excellent. Welcome. Sharon E. and then Simone. Good morning, Sharon Evans. I've got two roles. I always forget to say that I'm a board member. I'm the Western representative with the NLAW team. So mm -hmm. I represent the West Coast and, and that board. And I'm also an owner operator of SIVA Meditation. And I've been expanding. One of the ladies there, I tried to jot down your name. You talked about trauma coaching. I'm just registered for some trauma coaching now. It seems like that's uh, a big thing. So I'm doing some exploring in the trauma of the cosmic mind. I'm doing some training there. And I'm also expanding into uh, grief sessions, a mindful approach to grief using meditation. So I am a meditation instructor and I am getting lots of useful information from these networking sessions. And a lot of this stuff is coming from my clients in these sessions that this is what people need. Um, Marielle, if I'm saying your name right, I mean, what you're facing is transitional. So everybody needs support and that's why we're here. And that's pretty much uh, my work as well. I have reached out to the YMCA, would love to collaborate in that area as well. So I'm just fortunate to be here. Thank you, Carol and Allison. I'm in Pasadena. Thank you. Good luck, Sharon. Uh, Simone and then Tanya. Hi, um, I'm Simone Mercer. I work with uh, Immigration Popula Population Growth and Skills. Uh, labor market shortage challenges are um, core to what I'm doing right now. I work a lot with primarily with immigration programming and the increase in the Stephenville area has been quite significant and uh, labor market shortages are pretty much the core reasoning as to that. So interested to hear what everyone has to say today. Excellent. And certainly, uh, Simone in Stephenville, there's the potential on the horizon with Mr. Diamond. So I'm sure labor is going to be a huge uh, demand out in that region. 
if all of his dreams come true. <laughs> uh, Tanya or Tanya? I'm not sure which. Uh, go by Tanya. Okay. Uh, so I'm Tanya Kelly. I am uh, work here at the College of the North Atlantic. Uh, my role, I guess, is the Senior Manager of Administrative Services. Uh, we, uh, as the college, we provide partnership, as Ellen, Allison stated, with Navigate. Uh, and we um, work a bit with Sharon as well. Um, so I just wanted to kind of jump on today and to show our support to, to, to all of you and uh, to Allison and to kind of connect with others and uh, really interested in seeing what the labor shortage challenges are. We're all facing that. So I'm, I'm interested in uh, on that front as well. Excellent. Thank you for joining us, Tanya. Going to run back up to the top. So Don, you're up next and then Edwina. Um, hi, my name is Don. I'm with the Community Sector Council of Newfoundland and Labrador, and um, I'm currently working on a project, uh, an upskilling project, examining the labor market issues in the community sector in the Western region. So I'm, uh, I think, just listening to everybody. Um, labor market. This is a very uh, hot topic. Um, I think across the province. So I was just, uh, I'm looking forward to hearing what everyone has to say. Excellent. Thank you. Welcome. And Edwina. Good morning, um, Edwina Bateman. I'm the owner of Avail HR Training Services located in Port of Basque. I offer training in leadership, uh, disc training, and a lot of HR soft skills training workshops and so forth. So I'm looking forward to uh, hearing what everyone has to say today too. Thank you. Excellent. Welcome. So Sharon M., there you go. There's your audience. Uh, we've got folks from Porta Basque to St. John's, Bay Vert, St. Anthony. We're just missing Labrador. And we'd have it all covered. <laughs> so I'm uh, while you're doing a quick intro of who you are, I'm going to stop sharing this presentation and I'll bring up yours and then we'll uh, we'll get you going. Okay. Uh, uh, good. Yeah. Good. I was going to say good morning. It's almost afternoon. Um, again, I, I'm, I'm delighted to be here. Thank you very much, Allison for the invitation and opportunity. And thank you all of you for, uh, for participating today. And, and thank you, Carol, for facilitating this session. Um, delighted to be here. It's, uh, it's a very important topic. It's, uh, it's been, um, and it's not unique to Newfoundland and Labrador. It's one that's faced right across the country and beyond. Uh, it's exacerbated as I'll you know, reference in a couple of minutes in Newfoundland and Labrador, uh, but we still, but I guess one of my messages is that there are people and programs and platforms that uh, from a variety of, uh, of your partners and labor market stakeholders that are at this meeting and beyond to help address the labor market sh shortages and challenges and opportunities. It doesn't mean it's gonna be easy. I'll talk about NLWIC and how we are set up with our, uh, our original and now new mandated activities to help uh, address some of those issues. And I look forward to, um, after I give an overview of NLWIC and an overview of our, some of our new mandated activities, including one in particular that is quite exciting, that really is a, a very important tool to, to start to get at this in a very action-oriented and doable way. Um, and, um, but I, as, and I'll talk about a very high level, uh, the program, the people programs and um, the people, yeah, the people programs and platforms besides NLWIC. And, but at the end, I'd love to have, uh, to hear what your needs are that you haven't heard or where are some gaps or some really important things. Hopefully we'll have a bit of time for that and, um, and then uh, take it from there. But this is, I see this as a start of a conversation. So thank you very much, Carol, for, uh, for uh, taking me through the slides and, um, and I look forward to uh, hearing from you after this. Excellent. So uh, three questions and three takeaways. That's my intention anyway, to answer them. And I hope they're your questions. And if not, please at the end. So who and what is the Newfoundland and Labrador Workforce Innovation Center, NLWIC we're, we're, we're often referred to, and what has the center been doing? What's the value of NLWIC to the province and to its entrepreneurs and, uh, and also all of the labor market stakeholders? But who else in your ecosystem, who else is in your ecosystem with programs and, and platforms that can help address your needs for talent? And again, I'm, I've, I've only, I know that there are gaps there, we're st we, and I'll say this, Dana Wick is putting together through a number of initiatives, a, an actual digital uh, map of, uh, of stakeholders and programs and services. But today is a great chance to start the conversation to st and to identify 
what you think you've heard and what are some gaps or some good examples of what we should be doing more of. So I want to start with workforce development. That's it's very mature uh, in or more mature in the United States than it is in Canada. But I'm going to just define it for you here, and we're using this increasingly as well. So we're all on the same page. So it's a people-first approach with a focus on employment initiatives that address the creation and retention of a viable workforce through skills training, collaboration, and, and matching of employers and employees with the objective of economic prosperity for individuals businesses and communities and we like to connect the dots and say that economic prosperity also translates into health and wellness for individuals for regions and for the whole province and and together that's where our economic recovery will come from now and into the future so just to, to for those of who who aren't familiar with nlwic and again i'll take you through this fairly quickly but hopefully not too fast in my speaking uh, we are funded through the Department of Immigration, Population Growth and Skills, and our funding is federal provincial funding under the Canada Labor Market, Canada Newfoundland Labrador Labor Market Development Agreement. So they fund our research activities that I'll we'll talk about, as well as our operations. Um, we are administered by the College of the North Atlantic. Uh, we come under the Partnerships and Innovation Division, which is the external facing department or division of the college. And of course, we're at the top there, and I like to talk about we are. Uh, the focus of a contract really between the college and IPGS and with responsibility for certain outcomes around workforce development, workforce innovation, and I'll talk about what those impacts should be in a second. So we were established in 2017 by the provincial government and are administered, as I said, by the College of North Atlantic. We have a provincial mandate, we're based, headquartered out of Quarterbrook, uh, but we do have a provincial mandate to provide a coordinated central point of access to engage all of the labor market stakeholders, which include yourself, we're doing this today, uh, in the province about the challenges, opportunities and practices, best practices in workforce development. Our goal is to promote and support the research, testing and sharing of ideas and models of innovation in workforce development that will positively impact employability, employment and entrepreneurship within the province's labor force and particularly underrepresented groups. And that's key uh, there because what we'll be talking about and one of the solutions or to the challenge of labor market is, is ex ex expanding, I guess, our thinking about the talent pool itself. And there are many underrepresented groups whose participation rate are lower than we would like them to be. We can increase that that would increase, that's just one way to increase the, uh, the uh, and address the labor market shortages. Okay. So why NLWIC? Because uh, we have challenges, aging and declining population. There's been out migration, although we're starting to see in migration, which is, which is an interesting uh, uh, term, our latest research. Uh, recruitment and retention has been key issues. We continue to hear cha changing technology automation, skills shortages and mismatches, and for sure labor shortages. Opportunities are, this is where we like to talk about the demand. There is demand for employment, and, and that's partly the reason why we have some labor shortages, or just part, the, part of the reason. But the supply, we do have a supply, and that is, are those groups underrepresented in the mar labor market, which I just talked about. And then, of course, there's workplace and workforce innovation that's, that's, that's happening, and that's an opportunity to impact employability, employment, and entrepreneurship. So we had four original core functions, stakeholder engagement, research funding, best practices repository and capacity building. For our first couple of years, and again, we started, to, by the time our full team was ramped up of five, in, uh, five uh, team members in May of 2017, we really, since then up until, uh, well, for the most part, for the first three years, we focused on stakeholder engagement, which we should. We should be listening and hearing what are the issues impacting the labor force and labor market, but also research funding, and I'll take you through a couple of things in a minute. We're now focused on, uh, as well, growing, saying, okay, now that our research projects that are testing new models to attach people to the workforce, now that they're coming to an end, how are we going to help uh, encourage businesses, employers, uh, job seekers to adopt these models so that they can grow the quality and the quantity of the workforce. So capacity building is a piece that we're focusing on as we move forward. And a best practices repository is where we're going to put all this evidence of what works and what doesn't when it comes to attaching people to the workforce. And we're, we're learning lots of good things and I'm delighted that we have a couple of our research proponents on online. We call them the Newfoundland Labrador Workforce Innovators and they really are. They're a community based for the most part 
and but we'll be put, working with Magnet at Ryerson University actually, who is putting together a an accessible uh, repository so that we can uh, ensure that the, what we're learning about the tools and models of attaching people to the workforce, particularly underrepresented groups, how do we get that out and, and, and have you adopting it so you have another solution to your labor shortages and challenges. Uh, just a couple of messages, and you've heard them before, diversity and inclusion. There is a recognition, growing recognition, which is great, uh, that immigrants are key to uh, workforce development. And we're starting to see a shift, although there, it hasn't always been there, about other, the other potential talent pool out there, which I've already said about underrepresented groups, recruitment and retention, career development gaps and opportunities at all stages. And again, I should say that, the, as they say, the needle is, is, is moving. And I, I'm delighted to say there is some positive movement in all of these areas as a result of what government is doing, what community-based organizations are doing, what organ, you know, all of the collaborators that I'll mention. This is an interesting one though. There seems to be a communications of disconnect between employers about the jobs available in the province and, and what job seekers are saying. So employers are saying we need people, and then we have job seekers saying we can't get a job. So we're, we need to dig deeper on that one. I know it's not gonna solve all of the labor shortages and the labor challenges, but it really is something that really needs more data to, to really get at that issue. Sector associations are saying we really want to grow the pipeline of talent, not just well, who do we need today, tomorrow, next month, but how are we gonna grow the talent pipeline from K to 12 right through? Accessible and usable labor market information is so critical, it's not available, and we've heard that over and over again from many individuals. Uh, labor market information is critical. We're gathering a lot now in, in conjunction with the project that I'll dwell a little bit on it at the end, uh, but it's critical to know, for job seekers to know where the jobs are, what the salaries are, where they're gonna be in the future, uh, for businesses to know uh, who's available, uh, where, uh, et cetera. So it's, it's very, and, and for institutions like the College of the North Atlantic to know where, where the labor market trends are going so that they can offer the right programs so that they, so we can have individuals with the right skills at the right time in the right place, I like to say. So just quickly, we funded to date 20 research projects uh, in two calls and total funding 7.663 million. A number of them have come to, uh, uh, to completion. And as I said before, now we're starting to look at how do we make sure that what we're learning from that, those, uh, those uh, research projects about attaching people to the workforce, how do we get that out to employers, job seekers, organizations that represent underrepresented groups, et cetera. So just a picture of where the stars are the College of North Atlantic uh, 17 campuses and the uh, dots are really where we have our research projects. We do have um, uh, one in every region of the province, a uh, cluster of course in St. John's because of the larger population, but also because that's where the proposals came from and, and we look forward to future calls. We don't have anything on our agenda right now, but we'll keep you posted for sure. Uh, and again, I'm not going to go through this other than to say we had two calls and all of the summaries for these research projects are online. Uh, we're so delighted that Sarah, Sarah has joined us as a media information officer because now, uh, as a result of our workforce, uh, our NL Workforce Innovators Roundtable, a couple of weeks ago, we now have updates. So what we're going to do is make sure that those updates are available to on our website so you can start to see now how some are pro progressing and those that are finished, how they're doing. And then uh, we hope to, that'll generate the conversation and adoption uh, within businesses, organizations, et cetera. And government for, for, uh, for, for uh, policy and program changes. And just to give you a picture, we, we, we like, like to talk about our research projects. They've been testing models of attachment to the workforce. And we have uh, those projects um, have, uh, have involved sectors, uh, all except transportation and construction and oil and gas. Everything else has been covered. And so it's, it's, uh, it's very interesting about what we're learning about various uh, research projects. And of course, all of our underrepresented groups are, um, are, are part of participants, either one or more of them. And you can see that's immigrants or newcomers would like to say as well, indigenous peoples, refugees, women, youth, persons with disabilities, older workers, persons in rural and remote Newfoundland. And that's our uh, Newfoundland Labrador Workforce Innovators. Uh, we're very 
uh, excited. Uh, we're so delighted with their enthusiasm, with their commitment, and look forward to continuing to see the results of their involvement in terms of innovation within their organizations and within their communities and within the province. Next. Uh, just to, this, I just want to say here that we, everything we do is about collaboration, and someone had said that in their introduction. Very important for us, both within the province, and we've, we've collaborated with Navigate in the past. Nationally, we've had several collaborations, which, uh, which have been key, and we believe that right now we're looking at how can we now start to have them bring their expertise, uh, their funding, et cetera, to address the problems of skills development, workforce development, uh, in Newfoundland and Labrador, so stay tuned. But we're very excited about how we're working with them and continue to develop and get approached for collaborations, including our international one. We were one of two case studies in Canada uh, on an international uh, project by the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. And that looked at a number of things, including a recommendation for uh, that said that NLWIC should actually look at not only workforce development, but workplace, sorry, workforce innovation, but work place innovation because they go hand in hand you know if you have more innovation within leadership and with employees in an organization then that in fact will help uh, address practices uh, about hiring recruitment etc and uh, and so they go hand in hand so we're looking at in our strategic planning in the future about how we might address that and these are just the uh, an explanation of the project collaborations and um, and again this uh, I could have this uh, these uh, PowerPoint uh, available after but we have a, a variety of them and uh, our latest one that we're about to start in uh, in February would be the job transition pathways for Newfoundland and Labrador with the Brookfield Institute we'll be looking at um, how do we help transition workers from declining industries to those that are growing. And, and they've applied a model in Ontario that in the food sector, the retail food sector, and they learned an awful lot and they think that they can, that can be applied in Newfoundland and Labrador. Again, it's all about what we're learning that can increase our workforce, the quality and the quantity and the numbers and the diversity and inclusion. So our new mandate activities, uh, the top two are ones that I'll just talk about a little bit more detail towards the end and we're getting there. And that would be um, workforce development committees, first of all. And we've just rolled out uh, last week, the first of many, uh, actually 90 uh, workforce development committee meetings between now and the end of May. Um, and that's all about uh, really getting at, and our newest tool in our toolkit, how do we, ensure that regions and their 10 in the province that we're working at that they have that, that we're that we're fine that we know we understand first of all what employers uh, including entrepreneurs are looking for and who's available and how do we make sure that we make that connection uh, and standing committees in each of those that i'll mention are made up of government departments and the college of north atlantic because what they will do is they're going to action plan they're going to say okay you've got this need how do we match the supply and demand what programs and services do we have? And if we don't have them, how are we going to get those services? So it's going to be very exciting, but it's going to be very action planning and doing, we talk about. But it's also going to be testing some new models of labor market information. And I'll mention that in, in a slide as we come forward. The other, the bottom two, are, we finished underrepresented groups engagement session. We had a three phase project whereby we consulted with government and with organizations that represent underrepresented groups to find out what are the labor market challenges and opportunities. Uh, what are some research projects that are needed to fill in the gaps about what we don't know about, uh, about labor market, about participation in the labor market. And that went really well. We have a final report ready to, uh, to one more edit and we should be ready to send it off to government with our recommendations based on our consultations. And then the, the exciting one that's uh, about to uh, we're about to we're about to uh, ramp up in the next uh, in this you know the next couple of months is economic immigration focused ideas lab and that's all about coming up with practical bringing all the stakeholders together uh, issues and working teams is how we see it right now to identify practical approaches to the recruitment and retention of immigrants and newcomers in this province. It's going to be really critical. It's going to be centered, headquartered out of the College uh, of North Atlantic and NLWIC, but it will be virtual for sure as we start go forward. But a very important piece to about again addressing uh, the uh, the need for uh, to address labor shortages and labor market challenges. 
So this is just a picture of how they all come together. We had four original core activities. We have four new mandated activities. Some were overlapping in terms of stakeholder engagement. So we have six, but the focus here is connecting the dots between we've got COVID-19, we have workforce development and we have economic recovery. And those are critical and we focus on those. That, that's what we need to be seeing as a result of all the activities that we're doing. Next. So what is the value of NLVIC to the province? Uh, we just like to say that we're aligning with the province's priorities when it comes to increasing innovation, underrepresented groups, labor market participation, immigration and immigration. We're addressing collaboratively labor market challenges and opportunities, and we want to see that more. And we would invite the, those around the table today to find ways to uh, participate in some of our activities. We're promoting Newfoundland and Labrador, not only provincially, but nationally and beyond as a test bed and hub for innovation. And that really should only help make uh, our the environment uh, for entrepreneurship and for business and for communities to thrive and to attract uh, more people to come here, which is a key uh, priority for the province. And I think for a lot of our communities, hopefully. We're promoting, and then finally, we're attracting research from, uh, from all levels and collaborative partnerships, which we feel uh, we're gonna be able to ensure that, that we start to work with them further to focus on our issues of skills development, workforce development, uh, and the connection with economic recovery. So the people, okay. Oh yeah, no, there's one, yeah, just go back one, uh, Carol. So um, just really quickly, so what's the value that I know to the entrepreneurs at this table, to provincial entrepreneurs, and I guess the ecosystem, but really the entrepreneurs. We believe that our stakeholder engagement activity is that provides that platform for conversations and communications with NLWIC, but we also communicate with government. So what we hear, we also have those inform our conversation with government and hopefully the impact on policy programs and service delivery that government would choose and their priorities around research and, and, and other things. Uh, our new mandated activities that I mentioned, the regional workforce development committees, the underrepresented groups, stakeholder engagement, economic immigration ideas lab and their deliverables. Uh, I, we think that they're going to support your talent plan, planning, recruitment, and retention. Two of the deliverables from those activities will be, I briefly mentioned at the beginning, a digital workforce development ecosystem map that would have all of the players uh, who bring programs and services to the table to help you uh, address your labor challenges, your talent development challenges, et cetera, and opportunities. We're also going to be developing a labor market information tool, which I briefly mentioned. Again, it's all about a tool that can be accessible uh, to support our province's labor market stakeholders in your talent planning, your recruitment and retention. And then finally, there, I talked about our 20 research projects and we're testing and producing innovative models of workforce development that should positively impact your businesses. We believe that that impact is by providing access to these models. We're gonna give you access to that with evidence of what works and what doesn't. We're, going to, we're growing uh, the quantity and quality of your workforce talent pool, focus on attaching individuals to the workforce, particularly underrepresented groups. So those research projects and the evidence is coming from them about what works and what doesn't should do that. And that's our intention and our focus. And then uh, it should impact your business by increasing the, the overall entrepreneurship ecosystem, which throughout this province, which can only be positive for you and for the rest, both in this region and beyond. Uh, in particular, a couple of our projects are, are looking at social enterprise, which is a form of entrepreneurship, of course, and what works in, in that and how can we grow that. And that might be opportunities for your own diversification at, if you're an entrepreneur. And then uh, also looking at the number of female and newcomer entrepreneurs in the province. So there's lots of ways that our projects hopefully will, will have a benefit on, on uh, you as entrepreneurs and the ecosystem that supports you. And then finally, the next couple of slides will talk about, uh, um, again, we're putting together, as I said, a, a digital ecosystem map of players, programs, and platforms. Uh, and that's part of our research project that uh, the regional workforce development committees that I talked about. But I tried to group it into, uh, I guess, a couple of different categories. So there's innovation support. So who's helping you on the label? Who are the people uh, with programs and services uh, that can help uh, on the labor market uh, and labor challenge front? So NL Wake Up talked about us uh, and Navigate for sure. 
the Mon Center for Entrepreneurship. Uh, there's Genesis Center. There's a, uh, there's a number of other organizations, but they are there and they have programs and services. And hopefully the next time I talk, we'll have a, 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 a detail. I'll be able to demonstrate what exactly all of those are in front of you. But right now these are accessible to the people that, that are in our region and through their websites, et cetera. Government departments, immigration, population growth and skills. And Simone, you're here today and you, you emphasize the, you know, what your work is focused on. And it's really critical. It's about how do you address labor shortages? How do you help promote immigration as a solution? Industry, energy and technology, a number of programs that again are accessible. Fisheries, forestry and agriculture, that's your area. Atlantic Hand Opportunities Agency, and we have someone on the line from there. I think Mark Tierney and maybe one other person. Uh, Service Canada, Innovation Canada. Again, in doing, you know, putting together this particular slide presentation, the Innovation Canada, just as just one example, all of these have programs, but they have a searchable uh, database uh, of programs and services. So you just plug and play. And I encourage you to, to look at all of these government departments. Then there's the organizations representing underrepresented groups for a diverse and inclusive workforce. So you have uh, women, so NLO, you have, uh, and other organizations, WRDC, these, all of these uh, organizations, excuse me, all these uh, organizations have programs and services to help you meet your needs depending on your area. Uh, youth, they're the Community Education Network, one of our uh, organizations, uh, research proponents, doing great work. Persons with disabilities, they have they have programs and services to help you and support you as a business to hire persons with disabilities. One of the things we heard in our um, consultations on underrepresented groups was that uh, the, the cost of accommodation for disability, persons with disabilities is really, really high. But in fact, the data doesn't support that. So these, it's really interesting. These, the, these organizations uh, have programs and services and knowledge about what works and what doesn't. Indigenous peoples, there's very lots of services. The Halifu have a number of, uh, of services, and, and Carol, you mentioned before you started the work you're doing with them, which is excellent, but there's other, they uh, all have programs and services that help with labor shortages. So depending on where you're coming from, newcomers, there's a number of pro, uh, programs, uh, IPGS, uh, and Simone could talk to that as she suggested, uh, a, a really new program and trying to encourage, or new programs trying to encourage and make it easier for businesses to hire newcomers and to access newcomers. And then of course, older workers, they're the other underrepresented groups and, and they have programs and services or knowledge. Now, one of our research projects is the St. John's Board of Trade and uh, they are looking at barriers to hiring and, and retaining older workers. They've got some fabulous findings about the barriers and about some solutions to address it. And so the idea would be as we can get this, get disseminate this information about, again, about the results of the research that can help you or your colleagues look at a, a broader talent pool from which to draw upon to address your labor market uh, challenges and labor shortages. Sharon, can I jump in there for just a moment? Yes. Uh, one of the things that has come up in, I think it was after our diversity call, um, was organizations that support the uh, 2SL GBTQIA plus community. Um, it doesn't seem like, I know Allison's tried to do some research. Have you come across any organizations that support that community? Actually, that's really interesting. I mean, that right currently right now, that isn't under the definition, but we are exploring that now and, and looking at how we would recommend that. Uh, I know there's some private sector organizations, the College of North Atlantic, for example, I think it's Diversity NL would be one organization that does, uh, and I'm sure there are others, and I'd be happy to search that out and, and send that along if, okay. if that would be helpful, because we do, uh, Suzanne Dawes, our stakeholder engagement coordinator, does a fabulous job and has, you know, uh, lists upon lists of our stakeholders, and we'd love to find that out for you. So uh, I'll, I'll get back to you about that if, that, if that works for everyone. Excellent. Thank you. Because I know, as I say, that has come up from our community before. That's a really good idea. That's very important. Thank you for that. So, and again, there's just some more organizations that, uh, that are looking at, that have programs and services around workforce development, skills development, funding organizations, government departments. Again, uh, IPGS has the LMP program, which 
Uh, I mean, obviously there's different requirements, but there's, there is, there's funding available there in Elwick, hopefully in our future calls. Future Skills Centre just had a call for proposals, which doesn't close until I think it's the 25th. So there are programs there. And again, one organization, one business may find it too difficult to do that, but as a, as a collective, maybe there's a group within this network Allison or Navigate that would like to put something together that would be really helpful on that front uh, to address the labor shortages. Sector associations, there's a lot of them, and I don't know if if, uh, if the, those around the table are members of those. Uh, I think that they would they would love and and need the opportunity to grow throughout the province. So uh, that's but it's another big source, and they have programs and people that are looking at talent every day. Work for and then the one that I I wanted to put on the table before we, as we must wind down soon. And that is a work integrated learning. Um, and again, there's at least nine uh, categories um, of, of work integrated learning, but it's like co-op, it's internships, it's applied research. These are opportunities for you as businesses to really, uh, to start to develop your talent pipeline. Uh, there, there's huge uh, or lots of programs and funding available to support businesses lots of resources and i'd be happy to share them uh being produced by the business higher education roundtable they have a one they just produced a resource hub we had collaborated with them on a project a research project last year to find out what employers need and what and how to kind of make that connection with students it's a huge opportunity for you to grow your workforce now by giving opportunity you know giving students an opportunity to work in your business so I really highly encourage that. Um, and the College of North Atlantic is doing lots, but there are other institutions uh, that can do that as well. Magnet at Ryerson University, I put it there because Magnet is, uh, and we've collaborated with them and continue to, but they, again, they have examples of how this works and, and how they uh, have money to address this. So it's, it really is low cost way and a great way to grow in your pipeline and your talent. Um, and then education training providers, uh, we're there uh, and we have students uh, and other training providers have students that need work integrated learning. It's an opportunity for them to get experience, which, which often is a complaint that they don't have enough experience and it's a chance for you to grow your workforce. And then finally, there's private job posting platforms, and you know what they are. There's public job postings dashboard, which I would encourage you to look at, the Labor Market Information Council. And then there's corporate job boards of sector associations. So these are all sources of, uh, again, talent and potential talent for, you, for the workforce that you'd like to develop. So finally, this is, a, I wanted to highlight action number nine, I had mentioned, the Regional Workforce Development Committees, and I'll just take you through this quickly, uh, but it's a really important, it's another very important um, initiative, a core activity of NLWIC now. It's wrapped up in a research project that the Future Skills Center has funded, but it's all about workforce development. How do we make sure that we have uh, employers, uh, uh, we know what employers need, we know what uh, job seekers need. We know what organizations who can provide the talent need. We know what training and skills developments they need. How do we put all that together region by region, action by action, to make sure that we address the labor shortages, labor market challenges. So the project overview, the, the terms of reference, I'll just focus on that, to do, is to develop regionally tailored workforce development action plans by disseminating and developing labor market information, identifying priority focus areas for training and skills development, and the collaborative use of labor market programs and services, including immigration supports. So really these are committees, and there's 10, which I'll just show you the map of in a second, that are to serve as planning platforms to localize labor market activities and initiatives. The first week, last week, the feedback and the engagement around the tables of the standing committees was really, really phenomenal. And we can already see action items coming out of every meeting and it's starting to look at how do we start making you know making uh, connecting the dots between employers who need per persons to work and that includes entrepreneurs as well as uh, those who need to work or need to be upskilled to work better and then the 10 committees uh, they're based on the rural secretary region committees but they are uh, as you can see they're um, and, and they're right throughout the province uh, and, and we're very excited about uh, each of those. They all have six 
um, standing committee members, which I think I have uh, listed on the next one. Carol? Yes, who are the collaborators with NLWIC and IPGS? Because we are working closely with immigration, population growth and skills. So there's the Atlantic Canada Opportunities Agency. They have a member on each of the committees and some would represent more than one on one committee. College of the North Atlantic, the Department of Fisheries, Forestry and Agriculture, Department of Immigration, Population Growth and Skills, Industry, Energy and Technology and Service Canada. And I keep coming back to this is all about workforce development. It's all about programs and services that all of these committees have that they can say, yes, I can help address that need. Let's do it. How do we do it? Or if there's no program, let's, let's, let's tell the right people that there's a gap and let's create it. But we need to get people working. We need this uh, economy and regional economies to grow and develop and prosper because we need individuals and communities to grow and prosper. So we do part of the process and there's a whole action planning process, which I am not going to take you through, just to let you know there are invited stakeholders that the local, regional and provincial stakeholders who have a vested interest in workforce development, uh, they'll be asked to be identified by the committees uh, to contribute to the action planning taking place in particular meetings. And uh, that's an opportunity, I guess, if, if for example, chains of, chambers of commerce uh, have been suggested, um, there have been it's major employers have been suggested. But that's the that's way that there we'll get the input, as I suggested, to know what the needs are in every region. Uh, deliverables, it's really about getting the right labor market information. We're going to identify gaps in programs and services, uh, create the right uh, skills training, create action plans, but really actions out of every meeting that are getting done. And then really what's exciting is we're bringing these groups together, these uh, six organizations together to collaborate together to help these regions and their workforce development needs. Next. And then I just want, I mentioned it's wrapped up in a research project and it is testing and evaluating the impact of this, these regional workforce development committees as a new model for workforce development. And you see the partners there, but it's, uh, it's pretty exciting and will actually in the end produce a playbook that they call, they call it, that will be, will inform what we do in the future in Newfoundland and Labrador with the committees, but also we'll share it with the rest of Canada and beyond. And again, I've said that, so you could just move on to the next one, uh, Carol. And then I guess we're finished and it's time to, to hear from you. And uh, I just want to say it's, uh, it's uh, I, I would love to hear what your needs are. We have questions, comments and suggestions, but also what your needs are uh, to address what is one of your key issues, which is why you have this today, which is labor shortages or talent development. But I'd love to, yeah, I'd love to, and and because uh, that in fact would help inform uh, when we start to do our ecosystem mapping about programs and services. This will be the first bit of in, uh, feedback that we would have received. So uh, you heard it here first. Anyway, <laughs> thank you very much. Sharon. Very Thank you so much. That was a, a lot of information. I do I appreciate know. your offer to share that PowerPoint. So we'll uh, we'll get that from you and uh, yep. and make sure that folks get an opportunity to digest a bit of that. So we'll throw it open um, to the folks that are on the call. If there's questions, comments, uh, you could do this a couple of ways. If you're on video, raise your hand up physically if you want, and I can see that there is a raise hand on your little toolbar. Uh, down at the bottom. Uh, if that's not working for you, you can type in chat um, and we'll we'll manage it that way. So any comments to anything that Sharon brought up or questions, clarifications, aha moments, anything at all? Edwina. Just unmute Edwina. Sorry. That's okay. Not used yep. to uh, this this platform. Um, hi, Sharon. Edwina Bateman here. I as I have a I don't know if it's observation slash question. Yes. I didn't notice the Chambers of Commerce on the list of partner collaboration. Would they be a, a resource group or a group that would be um, your thoughts on that? Because I know that with the organizations, quite quite a number of them are. They seem to be struggling to stay afloat. Um, is that something that's been a consideration in terms of partnering or collaborating with the Chambers of Commerce? 
Absolutely. They would have been prior to a regional workforce development committee's initiative. We would have always engaged uh, as a key labor market stakeholder in any of our uh, stakeholder engagement sessions. We had innovation jams, et cetera. But Edwina, what's really exciting now is we have this newest initiative that will allow us to bring uh, those chambers in as invited guests to come to the table so that they can talk about what are the issues. And again, I didn't put up the planning, the whole planning session, but it looks at what are the issues and do you have any ideas about this, how to solve them? But what are what, what's facing this region and what are some solutions or suggestions? And, and so, yeah, so we're definitely going to be engaging. Now, what we do is the committees will be, uh, we, NLWIC will be facilitating the committees and the action planning and doing, but the committees, uh, you know, we will be bringing to the table who's interested, who wants to be engaged, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to engage as many as possible in that. Okay, great, thank you. I think they certainly would be a, a good, valuable stakeholder. Yeah, thanks. So. Yeah, yeah, thank, thank you. you. Allison. Yes, uh, just to add to that, uh, Edwina, um, you know, with the small businesses that come through Navigate, oftentimes it's, you know, one or two people. Um, they don't necessarily have, uh, you know, they're, they're sort of jacks of all trades trying to do everything from marketing to finance to, you know, the whole social media piece. And, and, and it can be really challenging um, when you have to wear so many hats and you don't necessarily have the funding to hire people. Um, so, you know, getting together with groups like the Chamber of Commerce or, or other, um, you know, groups of entrepreneurs where you have other small businesses that you could potentially partner with and potentially together pool your resources to hire someone to support you collectively um, can be some, uh, that, that can be one of the solutions for, for small businesses starting up. Um, there's also, a, there's another, a few other programs I wanted to mention actually that, um, uh, that I often refer people to, uh, my tax, uh, oh, MIT. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. My tax is, uh, is a, a great program. They, yes. they have, um, they have a number of, uh, of different programs within my tax that you can apply for. There's uh, one called uh, BSI. It's a uh, business strategy internships, I believe. And there's an accelerator program and they help small businesses, uh, by, um, connecting you with high level students who can come in and do uh, research and work for you yes. and on specific prob problems that you're trying to solve. And um, they will match your, your funding. Like they have their different rates and things, but um, generally speaking, you can get anywhere from 10 to 15,000 uh, worth of support for say four to six month project. Um, and then there's the ability that that works like Lego blocks. You can continue getting more and more projects to build your business and to build out, you know, those skills. And then eventually, you know, you have students that you can hire from that process as well. Um, Ripen is another organization that's R-I-A-P-E-N that matches uh, businesses um, with, uh, with students who are looking for problems to solve and jobs. Uh, and it helps them get the skills they need. It also gives, you know, small businesses a, a youthful perspective on some of the problems that they need to solve. Um, there's uh, Experience Ventures that's being offered through MCE right now, which is a similar program. Uh, and then there are also uh, entrepreneurial externships. So where we're sending students out into startups to help them identify, uh, again, it's, it's sort of problem solution. So find a problem that you could potentially turn into another business, or it could be, um, you know, problems that need solutions to help the startup grow. Uh, and then those problems come back, you know, to the to the folks that be at MCE or it could be Navigate or wherever, and we we help them, we help the students find the the solutions that can help you succeed. So there there are a lot of um, a lot of different opportunities out there. In addition to I'll say the more traditional supports like uh, IPGS and federal government, etc. Yeah. So there there are a lot of supports out there that can help you, uh, you know, hire but also innovate and grow at the same time. So there there are innovative solutions to uh, to employment as well. That's excellent, Alison. Thank you for that. It's interesting on the, uh, you talked about Ripen and that their, their connection with the Business Higher Education Roundtable. Only yesterday I had an email from a person, I don't know if you've heard this, Rural Roots. It's a work integrated learning initiative and uh, it sounds really, really interesting. And again, um, I'm going, you know, I can share that information, but it's it related to Ripen and, uh, and the work integrated learning. So those are excellent and I'll make sure that, that we start 
compiling what you've been saying too. Love and to and with our you know clients here, clients who come to navigate, oftentimes they need a student for you know a short period of time mm -hmm. to help you know maybe it's to get some of their stuff online, maybe it's uh, you know they're starting up a farm and they need someone who can help with some of the early stuff. Um, you know, I, I can help connect you to uh, the different student work term options that are available here. Yes. Um, I can connect you to students at Grenfell as well. And sometimes there are research projects that we can link you into. So you might be able to avail of, of you know, a, a wealth of resources, both from the student perspective and the research perspective, and at the same time, get some of your employment needs uh, met in the, the short term that eventually can turn into long term. Absolutely. There's researchers that want to research. <laughs> they, just, they just need someone to give them an idea to get going. <laughs> and there's funding for that. <laughs> and there's funding for that. That's right. Um, I know I just did some work with uh, Newfoundland Labrador Federation of Agriculture, and we just did a roadshow talking um, with farmers so that researchers can look at what they need um, and do some research. So instead of the farmer having to do it on a farm, the research committee will come out to their farm and do research there. Um, so that's, you know, there's always those synergies that can that can happen. Um, anything else from anyone on the call, um, whether it's an entrepreneur or someone in the support agencies that you're hearing? I do want to um, refer you into chat. Marie put a comment there, uh, Sharon, I think, which is interesting around accessibility. Um, so, you know, a lot of the technology and websites, and I know that that's a really big thing around accessibility. Um, you know, not everything has those needs or that lens as people are building solutions. Um, so I think that's a really good point that she brought up there to Excellent. remember as well. Um, Ashley. That was your camera you just took off instead of your microphone. <laughs> there you go. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, it's, it's Tuesday. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, so I just wanted to to say um, that through through the course of of our NLW project, um, we've researched barriers to employment uh, in the in the 15 to 40 age group. Um, but we're also looking for employers. Part of part of our project is to provide a, um, a supported work experience for our participants. So we do have wage subsidies available, um, which for you know for small business um, or a new initiative or anything along those lines, it, it, you know, we can help connect you to a potential employee, um, or if there's somebody that you could identify who could need some, um, upskills, like, you know, depending on what trainings and stuff might be necessary, we can assist with those, um, those things, and we'll provide, um, uh, job a supported job environment for where for the employer and the employee uh, whereas in, you know we meet with the employee every couple of weeks to make sure everything's going well um address any issues that come up from the employer's perspective sometimes in, in you know with somebody who's who's new to the workforce or somebody who's been out of the workforce or somebody who's um new to the area as such um or industry um those you know there there are barriers that will be exposed and and we will work with them to um uh, to address those so that the employer and the employee are working together in that relationship building piece and, and you know, hopefully creating a, a meaningful attachment to to their industry and that and that place in the workforce. Um, so if you know if anybody had any questions surrounding that, please feel free to reach out. Um, we are, you know, realistically, there's nothing we haven't heard over the years. And even if it seems like a strange question, um, 
that we might not be able to address right away, we will dig between myself and Leah to find that information and to see how we can best support you and your particular situation. Um, so I just I just wanted to uh, to say that before signing off. So we are, you know, we we are we are here to support employees, but we're also looking to support employers and how and and how they can have and provide the best possible experience for their employees as well. Excellent. Thank you, Ashley. You, are you and Leah still looking at doing some uh, employer engagement sessions? Yes, we are. Yep. Um, so um, initially we had thought that we'd have those complete by right now, um, but given uh, uh, the nature of everything, um, we're looking at uh, like mid-December, early January. So um, I will be reaching out in that respect to see if there's something that we can potentially uh, uh, collaborate or come up with okay. to see what we can do in that respect. Yeah. Excellent. Well, I think that's good because I think, I, I know for me, I'd probably think that you'd only be on the employee side, being the youth organization, but so it's nice to know that, you know, you want to help support employers as well. So um, very much so. And we've we have found though too that over the course of the last few months, we're seeing um, older individuals come in looking for employment services, which um, you know is it's kind of a change from what our initial perspective would be. Um, but there is there's a huge uh, you know group. Um, in that kind of not quite ready to retire, but looking for something, um, kind of age group, I guess, or or mm -hmm. uh, demographic, um, and and we are seeing a, a much bigger uptake in in that as well. So we're working to to address those needs as well from an employer and employee perspective. Excellent, thank you. That's where Alice and I keep bugging Scott Andrews, who wasn't able to join us today, because he is futurepreneur, and we keep saying we want the maturepreneur. We need the we need those of us of a certain age that are don't fit his guidelines. <laughs> so it's interesting that you're seeing that shift too, Ashley. But Ashley, you know the work that you're doing and all of our research proponents is so important. Again, connecting the dots between understanding why certain groups uh potential you know potential talent pool why they're underrepresented in the workforce mm -hmm. and if we can understand that better and test new models and reduce the risk and perceived risk by employers of, of actually hiring underrepresented groups uh, not that it's always happening but we can increase that then we'll increase the overall workforce and we should be able to address the labor shortages. Again, supported by skills, upskilling programs and wage subsidy programs, all the programs and uh, that uh, of the organizations, the people that I had mentioned in our work uh, in, in the couple of slides there. There's lots out there and uh, yeah, and I think it's a great, great that you're doing what you're doing and connecting those dots. Thank you. Excellent. Um, you talk about wage subsidies, Ashley and Simone had to pop off to another meeting, but certainly there's wage subsidy programs through yeah. the provincial government. Uh, Halapu has a grad incentive program, and I've learned from my recent travels with them that it's a highly underutilized program. Um, so it's for Indigenous students that uh, have recently graduated that can approach an employer and say, I can get you a subsidy if you hire me. Um, that will transition that, you know, starts at 100% and then over, I think it's a period of 12 weeks, it gradually decreases. So the employer doesn't have to bear the burden of that initial startup hire uh, at 100% at the beginning. They'll build to that. So similar to other wage subsidy programs as well. But I know for anyone in the Indigenous community that um, recent graduates out of, out of those programs, and again, there's no age on that. It's just if you've recently graduated from, from a program. Um, but I, I definitely think the mature student is something that uh, in the maturepreneurs areas that um, are coming to light more and more. And whether that's through like many of us on this call that are entrepreneurs, not necessarily by choice, <laughs> you know, it's it's changes in life and, and different circumstances that have sort of led us down this path. Um, but it's at a different stage, right? You're not that 18 year old going into entrepreneurship at the college or into the university and then coming right out. You have a different different path to it. So, 
Excellent. Any other comments, just as I uh, switch back to our presentation? Um, I've just got Sharon's contact information up there right now that you can see. And I'm just gonna switch back to here. But any other questions or comments? We'd love to hear, uh, Carol, and to the full group, if you do think of any other programs and or services uh, that you didn't see or you're not aware of or you'd like to see, or any of, you know, if you want to comment on your challenges and opportunities for, for the labor market or any suggestions for us, we'd love to hear them. I really appreciate your insights, your experience, and your contribution. So thank you for today, for sure. Excellent. Thank you, Sharon. I think the interesting one, Allison, that you brought up or the idea, I think, exploring, and I know that uh, Sharon Evans had to leave, but in, in other network groups that I'm in, and Edwina would be similar, you know, as a solopreneur, um, that whole idea of, am I making enough money to hire somebody? Maybe not. Can I contract out some of the work that I'm doing instead? So I'm the accountant, I'm the marketer, I'm the salesperson, I'm the delivery you know, and I'm the chief cook of bottle washer sweeping the floors, um, you know, I think that's a whole area of how to support small business in staying in business when we don't have a thousand dollar budget for marketing. We don't have, you know, a month. We don't have the wherewithal necessarily to do our books. We're trying to do our books, but do we make enough money to hire somebody to do our books and, and those types of things? So I, I think Sharon, that would be an interesting way to yeah. help the small solopreneur community be viable and contribute to the environment when we can't hire people. You know, I, I you know, a lot of this is around hiring and I had this conversation with Linda and Hillary with their groups as well, you know, mentoring students. I have no issue mentoring a student, but I'm, I'm not in a position to hire a student um, as a solopreneur. But we want to contribute and we want to support or we need the help to support and be viable. So, uh, you know, to me, that's an area that would be kind of interesting, especially yeah. for those of us that aren't in those sectors. We're not in the government sectors. We're not oil and gas. We're not agriculture. We're not aquaculture. Maybe we're a nail technician. Maybe we're a hairdresser you know maybe we're a consultant like Edwina and ourselves myself who we work with all of these industries but we're not one of those industries so we don't seem to qualify for any type of funding um, to to either help grow or to you know to to help contribute to that employment piece of it um, because we're just sort of not at that stage right Edwina maybe you've got your hand up maybe you can jump in on that one too uh, yeah, and a good point, Carol. I, uh, you know, I echo everything you said there, and I know I've been in positions where I've been asked if I could take a student, and I'd love to help a student and mentor them, but, you know, you work from your home, so it's kind of challenging to do that, so that's one issue that I ran into, like you, um, you know, you're the jack of all trades, you're doing everything, you're doing your marketing, you're doing your accounting, and, you know, you're you're doing everything as a solopreneur, and I love that word. <laughs> as a, you're doing everything. So, you know, there are times that I would love to have some help and I would be willing to hire. I'm just in a situation where, number one, I don't have the space, or, you know, do you have the funding? Is there support out there? And there's nothing. And I'm sure, Carol, you've searched as well as what I did. There, there's nothing for individuals that are in positions like ourselves to, to seek help and to get help. And that, if we did have that help, you know, that might allow us to grow our business. Mm -hmm. But we can't grow if we can't get any further with, with all of the work that we're, we're tackling as, as solo entrepreneurs. And, and, and Edwina, some of those programs, I'm sorry, Sharon. No, <laughs> some, no, of those, no. <laughs> some of those programs that I mentioned can help with that. Um, and, uh, you know, remote work is an option now as well right you don't necessarily have to have an office that someone can come into and you can connect to students all across the country with a group like ripen for example um yeah. so there you know the 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 possibilities right now are sort of endless it's just a matter of connecting to the right organization with the right request um and then there is support there for you 
Yeah, I, I'm just thinking, like in particular, as twice now I've been called by the college to see if I could uh, take a student because they were interested in HR. You mm -hmm. know, that's not something that you can do virtually. Uh, yeah, as much as I'd like to help, so I, you know, I feel bad that I have to turn them down, but it's, uh, you know, it's a challenge trying to help a student that, that would like to pursue a career in HR for, and there are many fields that, that would be a challenge, mm -hmm. you know, some things you can do virtually, um, yeah. but unfortunately there are some things that would be a little bit more difficult. Yeah. And the other thing for, for me personally is, to be perfectly honest, I don't want the headaches of staff you know, and the occupational health and safety and the payroll ramifications, but doesn't mean that I wouldn't necessarily hire somebody for something. I, right. I just think I would want a different relationship. I, I don't necessarily want to be an employer of other people. It would be, you know, contract work or, or those types of things, but I still think that contributes to the workforce, just not quite sure how. It sounds like there's an entrepreneurial opportunity waiting to happen to service other entrepreneurs with solutions. <laughs> that you, yeah. they're really, really interesting. And then re, just as a final point, on the remote work side, um, and I think we've lost uh, uh, Andrew, uh, but also uh, the, uh, the Community Education Network, they were, their research project was looking at various models and viability of social enterprise. And one of them that they established, which you may have heard about, was they've adopted an Irish model of remote working and they see it as a really important way to grow uh, the workforce and uh, employment in rural and remote Newfoundland Labrador. But it's called remote work and it's really interesting. So hold that thought or, or at least I think that's a really good uh, connection there, you know, like that idea that remote could probably work for you, particularly if you don't have the space and, you know, and you don't need someone full time, maybe only part time. Anyway, yeah, very yeah. interesting. And Maria's put a comment in there as well around individual um, you know, a lot of the tech folks are working remotely, and certainly we've yep. seen that in this province where, you know, yes, you can start a multi-million dollar tech from St. John's, Newfoundland, and Labrador, and you can have staff all across the province and all across Absolutely. the world. So, and to your point, I think that's, that's uh, you know, an, an excellent piece. Um, I guess the other thing, I'll throw this out to Ray and a few of her colleagues that have dropped off, but to, to pass on too, that, you know, I know I've been hired by other entrepreneurs through some programs through CBDC and, and others. However, again, if that particular client isn't in those emerging industries, if they're not an ACOA client, if they're not a CBDC client, it's a bit of a gray area about, you know, whether whether they're eligible for that funding. So the, you know, the not-for-profit sector seems to be fine, but um, you know, the individual if Edwina wanted to hire me or she wanted I wanted to hire her, is she in the magic category that I can hire? You know, so sometimes the skills that we need don't line up with with some of the criteria for people to be able to use funding um, to hire a consultant. So that's not an answer, Ray, you have to answer today, but I know that that's um, you know some of the things that that folks have run into when they've tried to secure um, hiring somebody to help out whether that's on a project or as, as staff. Um, Carol, I, I want to jump in before too many people leave. <laughs> yeah. I just mentioned the Jose Lamb event really quickly. <laughs> yeah. Um, we've uh, we've got an event coming up uh, on November 20th. It's November 26th in the evening until Sunday afternoon on the 28th. Uh, it's the Jose Lamb startup event and it's a startup weekend style event. Um, that's open to students and the general public from anywhere. You don't need to be from Cornerbrook. You can be from, uh, you know, if, if you're in town or you want to come in that in in town that weekend for the uh, for the event, by all means do. Um, it's a chance to come and meet with other entrepreneurs and learn some skills uh, about starting a business um, and potentially even grow your business. Uh, we've got um, ba basically on the first evening, uh, people will get up and do informal quick pitches of a business idea. Those get voted on, the top ideas move on through sort of to the next round, and then everybody joins a team. Uh, so you pick the business idea that you want to be a part of, and you've got um, the span of the weekend to basically start a business. Uh, it's, it's a pressure cooker uh, style event where everybody gets their skills together, you get paired with a mentor, 
and by the end or by I'll say lunchtime Sunday you should be ready to pitch uh, Dragon's Den style um, to a panel of judges uh, and potentially win uh, win the uh, the the startup uh, event um, and there are companies actually I don't know if Mark is still on the call or he's okay he's just left but um, uh, Mark Tierney for example was part of a group that pitched uh, Saucy Newfoundland the, oh. the Newfoundland sauce company uh, they won uh, a couple years later they're in 40 retail locations yeah. so you know real businesses come out of these events um, and it's also a, a great opportunity to meet other entrepreneurs and maybe meet some people who have the skills that you're looking for right now um, so it's you know coming to these events and connecting like 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 we're doing here today it's not just about learning that particular skill it's a networking opportunity and those opportunities lead to potential hires and partners and clients and so every chance you get to get out there and network uh, I would recommend that you join. Absolutely I can speak to that one I was at that event I showed up as a pitcher on Friday night uh, Mark pitched an idea another couple pitched an idea and a third person pitched an idea and by Friday evening they came together as strangers essentially merged their ideas and by Sunday were selling us sauces and giving us samples. They had YouTube up and running a website, they had sales and Friday night it was three separate ideas. Wow. And they collided Friday night and, and like I say, by Sunday blew us away. Um, another one, I've been a mentor at the event. I think the winner, the one that the year that I was there was a um, cannabis lounge. Uh, and that was before cannabis was legal, but it was anticipating that you know, those of you that have students that are renting, they're not allowed to smoke cigarettes, let alone cannabis in a rental place. You're not allowed to smoke on campus. You're not allowed to smoke walking down the street. Where do you go? So that was, you know, the innovative idea. Um, there's been all kinds of, of neat uh, businesses coming out of it. Um, so it's a fantastic weekend. It's very, very intense, but fun and they feed you. I hope you're feeding them again, <laughs> Alison. <laughs> It's always good. <laughs> yes, and, and I, I'd ask uh, you know all the other support organization folks uh, on the call if I, I put the information in chat and the links. Um, uh, please do uh, share it out to your networks. Um, we'd love to see folks coming in from, like I said, from other areas. If anyone wants to come up from Stephenville or Port of Basque or down from St. Anthony or wherever, uh, we'd love to have you here. Yeah, absolutely. Our next coffee break is scheduled for December 8th. I don't know, Allison, if you have the link um, or if I even sent it to you. Maybe I did. It's in, <laughs> it's in the invite. Um, but the registration's open. We'll have that up shortly. Uh, we're probably at this point looking at doing another Christmas type launch. So anybody wants to come on and tell us what's happening uh, for their Christmas sales or holiday sales. Um, but that's subject to change. We'll see what sort of percolates. If there are any suggestions from the community, of topics that you'd like to see, uh, let us know. If you are hosting an event, please tag uh, Allison and Navigate. She's fantastic at promoting uh, businesses and putting our events out there. Um, if you uh, are not yet on Navigate's directory, I encourage you to do that on their website. They have a business directory under the resources section. You can post your logo and all your contact information. Um, and there's businesses from all over the province there. It's it's really nice to see and it's really quick and easy to see because it's all Visual it's all our logos and then you click on that and you get more details uh, It's under the to... uh, ecosystem section. Yeah, when you go under ecosystem, there's also an interactive ecosystem map uh, That a subway map that you can click on that brings you uh, to different locations like some of the re some of the uh, Organizations that we've talked about today and some of the supports are there and uh, you hover over the subway stop you click on it it'll give you a description of what they do and then the the website links are there as well so in that ecosystem section uh, yeah check it out and if you want to have your your information posted in the directory we need your logo and if you click on one of the logos that's there you'll see the format we basically just need uh, your information in the format that's there yeah absolutely and it's interesting because I heard Sharon talk about the ecosystem. That's how this started, right? This coffee break started as a pilot in January 2019, 20, 2020, January 2020 for three months. So we went wow. January, February, March, and two days after our March session, the world shut down and we've continued. So, um, you know, we, our pilot, we were ahead of the, ahead of the curve. <laughs> um, and you know the ecosystem is what it's about it's connecting with each other and learning from one another and 
and uh, I can't stress networking enough, but, but I'm an extrovert. I love to network, so <laughs> and I was not always for everyone, but um, I just think this, you know, the in-person stuff is fantastic, obviously, and we want to do that as much as possible, but I'm very pleased that Navigate is, is willing to uh, give this opportunity for people. So we, you know, we've gone, like I say, Port of Ass to Bayford to St. Anthony to St. John's. I think this is just wonderful. Um, to, to, to London and now we've got Marae back here with us. <laughs> yes, we were in London, but now she's back in town. <laughs> You're okay, <Yeah>. London. <laughs> she was our international, uh, getting us to go international. <laughs> Congratulations, you got great models, Alison. As you know, I've been very interested in what you've been doing and around that ecosystem. And what we'd like to do is take a program and services accessible by various organizations to a whole new level by, uh, you know, by digitizing it and making it really accessible that way. So thank you for all your, you know, for that kind of inspiration and and templates. So thank you. Yeah. Thank I think you. And I thank think you, Sharon, for coming on and, and sharing all of the information about uh, the great work NLWIC has been doing. You guys are growing fast, and uh, I'm I'm excited to see uh, the new projects that you that you have on the go unfold. Excellent. Absolutely. And I think I think the work you're doing, Sharon, is only going to add and enhance what what is already starting to get out there so yeah. um the accessibility piece to Murray's comment if you can make that more accessible then that's uh that's what it's about right excellent thank you um anna if you're there we didn't get a chance to hear from you i don't know if you want to do a quick intro or if you want to uh, type over in chat who you are uh denise thank you for your comment i'm so glad that you were able to join so please stay tuned and uh join us again uh, but Anna, if you are there, you can open up your microphone if you wish, or just say a quick hello over in chat. All right, I think she stepped away. Um, so I'm going to end it there. So thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, please stay tuned to Navigate and or uh, my social media platforms. We'll get the recording up. We'll get a follow-up email out. Uh, our next session is December 8th. We hope to see you then. And have a fantastic day, everyone. And I noticed that I'm going in and out of shadows, and that's because the sun's shining. So um, I was going <laughs> to complain and close the window. <laughs> so I apologize. It's not for that, here but, yet. <laughs> but it's it's nice to see the sunshine. So uh, have a fantastic day, everybody. Take care, and thank you again, Sharon, for joining us today. Thanks, thank everyone, and thank you, Carol, for facilitating.